how often does this lending to family happen? I lend pretty often. I, yeah, I sometimes don't, don't need money. And so, but there are times, there are times where I'd rather just be like, you know, it's okay. You know, like it's, it's fine, you know. But tell me why she needs the money. She's not making like, I, she, I feel like sometimes she'll waste a little bit more than needed. Okay, well, there you go. That is the answer I was expecting and was fearing. That means if she is wasting more money than she should, and she is relying on her 19-year-old kid who should be focusing on school and bettering himself at this time, you are enabling her bad behavior. You are enabling her misspending. Anytime you help her out like this, she is gonna continue to do it, if not even worse. Welcome to Monthly Money, where we review someone's finances from the previous month, what they're spending, what their income is, and how that all comes together to meet the future goals that they want to achieve. Today, we are meeting with David. David, how old are you and where are you based out of? Yeah, so I'm 19. Um, I live in Miami, Florida. And how would you describe your current financial situation? Um, I mean, I'm in college, so I don't have the most money, but I mean, I try to take care of my financials. Would you describe yourself as financially educated when it comes to personal finances and stuff? I would say I just started getting financially educated. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at your monthly money. We'll look back at the last 30 days in your checking account. So in your Bank of America checking account, you had a beginning balance pretty high for a college student of $2,991. Deposited in just about two thousand dollars. Again, also pretty high. You did take out one hundred fifty for ATM, and then other subtractions of over two thousand. So you actually ended at the uh, middle of August when this statement was taken. Uh, two thousand seven hundred nine bucks. So a couple hundred bucks left. Does it make you a little nervous that more was taken out than put in? I mean, I would say yes. Because like, it makes no sense to be wasting more than you put in. But I'm pretty sure that month I had some stuff going on, like a few concerts. So I know I wasted a little bit more than I, I would normally. Interesting, because every single conversation I have where someone spends a little more money, they say, yeah, that month was unique and that's something <laughs> special. Well, that seems to be a unique conversation for every single human being I have a conversation with. So... We'll see how this stands up. Let's take a look. <laughs> so, Zellin, or yeah, some Zellin, some people, a couple Stripe payments, and uh, DoorDash, more Zellin, lots of Zell, lots of Stripe payments. What are these Stripe? Oh, these are deposits. So, these were Zell's coming in and Stripe's coming in. What are the Stripe's coming into you for? So, I, so I guess my job, um, I'm a, I do Instacart. So my payments, like, uh, I get paid, like, every week. So it'd be in a stripe. So, yeah. Okay. How much do you think you bring in on a monthly basis on average? So you see, that is, that varies a lot. I usually have a goal. By the end of, like, um, by the end of a week, I usually try to make 500. So far, it's been going pretty bad, I guess. So. Oh, no. Why is that? Why has it gone bad? I it's it's hard i mean it's it also depends on the area so i depend like i guess you know instacart works off, off of other people what they order having haven't been getting too much orders in lately so now i would say i make like 300 a month i mean 300 a, a week when it comes to the gig economy like that are you able to like well i i know you work for instacart and you'd have to get into the other services but would you not rather, you know, maybe switch to Uber Eats during heavy dinner time hours or lunchtime hours and uh, stuff yeah. like that? So I tried DoorDash. I think I got paid DoorDash one time a month. I, I hate it. It's not good. They pay you very little. I'm used to the area that I do, uh, the area that I work, is a lot of retired people. So they, when the orders do come in, it's pretty big. So I'd rather not drive so much for a couple of dollars. That's fair. I feel that. Okay, so lots of cells coming in, lots of stripes coming in uh, from your gig work. So, uh, yeah, I took a lot out. Miami Gardens, five below, a couple Publix, some Dollar Generals, getting some gas, more Publix. So at least they're, 
well, these grocery shopping trips are so small. What are you getting at Publix for only five thirty-four and four fifty-nine, and uh, you know other small things like that? And then Chipotle and another Publix for twenty bucks. Usually, when I start seeing those minimum payments or those very small payments, it kind of screams like you didn't need to do it and you wasted like twenty bucks. What are those? Yeah, so um, I work near a Publix. Like, that's, like, my station. I'll go there to get the orders. Sometimes I'll run a little late, so I'll just get... They have a bakery there, so I'll just get breakfast. Those are the small ones, yeah. Okay. And then your other subtractions, they are all Zelle and credit card payments and Ally. So Yeah, I, I pay my bills through Zelle. Interesting. What's your monthly rent currently? I live with my mom, so I don't pay any rent. Very good. Our, okay, so then we will go to your credit card. Yeah, that's where, <laughs> that's where most of it happens. Yeah, but you don't hold a balance, it looks like. Is that correct? No, never. Very good. So purchases of 1431 bucks, and you made a uh, payment on your previous statement or this statement of 1439 so very good. Your new balance total is actually less, so maybe there's a refund or uh, points applied, something like that. Or just overpaid. And some Costco, more Publix, five below, more Publix, lots of Publix, very small ones. So 22, 578, 268 for Publix. And more Publix, 25 and 79 cents. Whoa, what is this commercial pay vacuums for just a lot of $2 payments all of a sudden? What's that? So I live in an apartment, so when I clean my car, um, instead of like using, like instead of buying a vacuum to clean your car, I have to go to like a gas station. They have a, a commercial vacuum, so that's why. Okay. And a bunch yeah. of other Publix back to back for fifty three, fifty nine, one seventy eight, twenty one, thirty two, fourteen, forty four, five fifty five. Yikes! And then Costco gas, obviously your Costco. Your, your gas payments in general are going to be higher doing a driving gig thing. And then you also go to IHOP and McDonald's and Smoothie King and Smoothie King and Chick-fil-A, Burger King. Oh, Burger King. Let's see. These, this is all within a week. So that was within a week. Um, some Havana, Chick-fil-A, Little Caesars. Chick-fil-A. Oh, it definitely looks like, are you grabbing food on the go or is this grabbing food on the go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of these purchases, um, my college has these restaurants on campus. So sometimes it's just easier to get food there. What about packing food? You see, I usually, if I do take food, it'll just be like a sandwich or like, or I guess, yeah, just a sandwich. And I'm not really a fan of eating that all the time. So... I understand that, but then with even more McDonald's and Burger King and Chick-fil-A and La Antioquina uh, Restauranta and a vending machine and yeah. So with that kind of stuff, it looks like almost the five days you're at school, it's like a purchase at our, some kind of restaurant every day, maybe like four out of the five days. Well, actually now... Um... That was during so I, that was during my summer term. Now in fall, I only go one day a week, and then the rest is online. So some of those, some of those like McDonald's and Burger Kings would be like me like just eating like 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 if I'm out doing Instacart, I'll grab I'll grab like lunch and stuff like that. All right, so the spending only matters if the rest looks bad. If you can fit this in, because what I would rather see that go to is paying for other things, but let's continue, and then we can see if that's a bad thing. So your savings. This is bad. See, this is where this is where the spending on the last thing becomes bad, because you got a beginning balance of 1500 bucks. You know, okay, cool, just a young college student. I'd rather see some savings than none. It's not a lot, but, you know, it's a great start. But you withdrew $200. Why did you withdraw two hundred dollars? You see, that was pretty dumb. I so I'm pretty sure it was a Zell. It was. Yeah. So I think I lend my sister money. I gave her some money that she needed, 
Yeah, and I'm the type of person where I hate seeing money come out of my checkings. So, yeah, so I sold it to her, and then she paid me back for it. She did pay you back. Yeah, so I didn't lose it, but I shouldn't. I probably should have just not touched it. Is it back in the savings? No, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, it's the savings. Yeah, it, it's back. You need to retrain your mind where it's more painful to see money leaving your savings than it is checking. Because savings, this needs to be your emergency fund that you use only in emergencies. And also on the other side of things, I'm glad you got it back, but lending to family is risky. Lending to friends, family, random dude on the street, anyone, it doesn't matter, is risky. Only 200 bucks, nothing crazy, but I don't know. I, I would never expect to get that back. I'm glad she did. Sounds like, you know, she, she's probably a good person, but that gets pretty risky. How often does this lending to family happen? I lend pretty often. I, yeah, I sometimes don't, don't need money. And so, but there are times, there are times where I'd rather just be like, you know, it's okay. You know, like it's, it's fine. You know, I'll just give you the money. You don't have to pay me back. There are some times I'll be like, like, um, um, my mom. So I'll just lend her like, I can't say no. So I'll just like, okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can yeah, say no. But, yeah, but I mean, like, I can't really say so. And then she'll like pay me back. But it's, I mean, I, I, I either way, I get, a, I get the money back. So. No, what I don't like is uh, when you're saying this happens a lot. It sounds like you're almost fronting their paycheck. They're getting like a one of those programs where they get a little bit of their paycheck a week early because they're being irresponsible with their money and they're relying on what did you say, 19 years old? Yeah, I'm 19. 19 year old kid in order to do this. Why do they need the money? Tell me why they need the money. Okay, so I, I, you know, um, Florida is pretty expensive to live here, and I just live with my mom, and it's me, my brother, and my sister. So it's three under just one person. I don't really get help from my dad, so I kind of have to fill in kind of that spot of like being like the man of the house. And so some of the publicists are, she'll be like, "Hey, can you grab?" And it's and it's only like necessary, so it's not like oh. Like, you waste it because I don't want to. It'll be like, hey, can you grab like this? I need this to cook. Or and I'll be like, yeah, no problem. Sometimes she'll be like, hey, um, sell me real quick, and then I'll pay you back later. But tell me why she needs the money. She's not making, like, I, guess, I feel like sometimes she'll waste a little bit more than needed. Okay, well, there you go. That is the answer I was expecting and was fearing. That means if she is wasting more money than she should and she is relying on her 19-year-old kid who should be focusing on school and bettering himself at this time, you are enabling her bad behavior. You are enabling her misspending. Anytime you help her out like this, she is going to continue to do it, if not even worse. When you do this, and I know it is so hard, especially since you live together, there's that family pressure and all this stuff, but anytime right. you're doing it, it makes it worse. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's like my mom, I, it's like hard to say no, but, but I feel like she does, so that, um, she's starting to do it, she has, like a, I guess you call it like a side hustle, she does Amazon delivery, and so she do that with her main job, and now it's, um, it's like, it like, you know, helps her a little bit more, but, um, yeah. Well, but I, I still, I still like, I'll still give sometimes. Like I'll still, so. When it comes to her income and stuff like that, you know, uh, I would have to have a separate conversation with her to talk about her whole thing like that, that, that is whatever. That's her situation. But I will tell you right now, it is not a college student's responsibility to take care of the family. It is your responsibility to focus on your studies and being prepared for your post-graduation. And I understand wanting to help and I love the helping attitude and helping, but you're not helping by enabling bad behavior. When you're accelerating something that you will always have to continue to help with because you're, because it'll always continue if not get worse by the constant enabling, then you are doing a disservice. I know it might hurt to say no, but you're actually doing a more long-term problem for them. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, like I don't get charged, like I don't pay rent because I go to school. So I'm the first generation to go to college. So it's always been like, if you go to college, no problem. You live, you know, for free. Um, I don't, you know, they, they should cook me dinner and so. stuff. So I kind of see it as like, it's only fair to help out a little bit, like with things that she'll need. It's usually, the selling usually happens with just groceries. 
like instead of sometimes there'll be a couple of zells that are not for groceries but a lot of the publics will be like me bringing like stuff home to cook which i don't i mean i i think that's just like helping out though like i don't really see that as like enabling i guess it, helping out is okay but you specifically said she is spending I, I don't remember the exact phrase you said, but you said she is spending needlessly on some things, more frivolously on some things. And if she's asking you for money because she doesn't have it at that point, that's enabling. If you were just helping out because the family is in a tight situation and they're not frivolously spending on other things, they're not needlessly spending on other things, then that's not enabling. That's just you helping. But when they are spending things that they shouldn't be able to when they are struggling and they are relying on their 19-year-old college student son for the money, that is enablement. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, could, I guess I could see that. Yeah. When it comes to your savings account, 1500 bucks. we need this to be higher, um, especially since your family relies on you, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't really... I mean, I so I kind of think of it like I save in a different way. So my um, checkings account, uh, that's why you, in the beginning, it was like, it's high. So I'll... What I call like a cushion. First, it was 200, then it was 500. Now it's, I think, 2000. So I don't really go below that. And so any money that's below that, that's just like, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll, I probably won't ever reach an overdraft fee, but that's just like just to have. So I guess that would be like considered savings. But then again, putting it in the Bank of America, that, that account, like the interest is like terrible. So I just put that, I just have a separate account just to like keep it out of mind you know but then again i still like zell for me i get yeah. that but even still just with the money you have on the side it's about three thousand five hundred. again college student situation i kind of like it there's some dependence on you and i want you to be more set up for post-college so i'd want to see that up and with wanting to see that up the spending on things you don't need like fast food that's where that'd be cut back on but let's continue looking at you know where money goes on a monthly basis and then we can kind of determine if that spending is bad. So you do have car debt, a monthly payment of just about 300 bucks rounded up. It's a 2018 Nissan Sorento. I always pay a little bit more. What do you pay? It's not that much. I think it's, it might have dropped now. I keep seeing 290 something, the payment now. But I, I, just, I just set on auto pay for 310. It's not that much. It's just a little bit more. Oh, the outstanding balance is fifteen thousand dollars. That is so bad for your income situation. That I mean, I need a car. Yeah, you didn't need a fifteen thousand car. Uh, well, that wasn't even a fifteen thousand dollar car. You didn't need a fifteen thousand debt on a Nissan car. Original balance of so you took out sixteen thousand five hundred. What was the purchase car? Oh, it's at seventy two months. Oh, they did that to get your payment down, and it's on a Nissan. Is in a oh goodness, this is this is not a good purchase, my dude. This is beyond your means, to be clear. I mean, yeah, but like I needed a car, and my I know it's it it was it it probably wouldn't have been my go to, but my aunt actually works at the dealership, so she kind of helped me out a little bit. But, I mean, at least, you know, I get, like, free oil changes and free stuff like that. Your aunt did not help you out by getting you to take out an original balance of $16,500 when you make less than $2,000 a month when your family relies on you when you are trying to go through school right now and you've barely even started and you have 61 payments left. My goodness, that is not help that is not a blessing that she gave you she gave you some shit, a pile of shit right on your face yeah but i i was looking into refinancing um i checked through credit karma and i could refinance it says but i don't know how that works like i don't know if it'll affect my credit badly or anything well it, it would be a hard inquiry and then there would be whatever uh it ends up yeah. Oh, the 10.24 APR. Oh, it gets worse. There was no helping out from the ant. This was not a help, dude. You did not get helped. Never use that word again when you talk about this car. She did not help you. This sucks, dude. 
this sucks. When you would have gotten out of school, when you would have gotten a decent paying job, you could have easily afforded this. What what was the car total? Um, probably like eighteen thousand bucks, twenty thousand bucks. No, actually, it was eighteen, but I got it down to sixteen because of my aunt working there. Well, your original balance was sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. To be honest, I really can tell you, I only, I didn't, I mean, I didn't put too much down. I probably put like three thousand down, if I remember. Okay, so it was essentially twenty thousand dollars after everything. Okay, so you could have gotten. I want you to have a twenty thousand dollar car, and you could have gotten that, and I would have encouraged that when you had a good paying job post college. You do not need, and you're putting so many miles, you're putting so much wear and tear on this car with your with your your uh, side hustle on a 72 month 10.24% APR loan. This is bad, dude. This is bad, not in terms of it's gonna ruin you. This is just a bad purchase. This, oh, I haven't, I haven't had the pleasure of saying this in a long time, but you should seriously consider getting rid of this car, uh, especially while the car market is still where it is now, getting this car and trying your hardest. It's hard to find a car between five and $10,000, but try your freaking. well, how are you going to buy it? Okay. I don't want you to take out a car. Uh, what's your credit score? Um, I think it's 695. Yeah, 695 pretty sure but you see i got it appraised on carmax online and it'll give me around like uh if i put in all the information like fifteen thousand around there but i mean they still got appraised in person but the thing is like i need the car and it's kind of hard you don't need this car. car you do not need this car you do not need 72 months at over 10 percent interest you need a car you do not need this car i guess but i mean like i'm already like with the car and the whole thing about the miles i am looking for another job i don't like like i don't it's more than not liking instacart i can't because of what you said so i wouldn't consider myself like a car guy but i hate putting miles on my car and i put a lot so far and so that's definitely gonna stop um i'm in job searching right now so that's and ma mainly because of you know oh. my 500 weekly drops to 300 Oh, maybe I haven't looked at car insurance in a while. I kind of forgot what my payment is because I just kind of paid in lump sum. But your car payment is $305 a month? No, but that's me and my mom, so I pay half of that. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, no, I'm just on her policy. Yeah, no, no. I send around like 150 through Zelle. That's what I mean. Like Zelle payments are like me paying my bills. So I pay like 150 so with your car insurance and your car payment, dude, it is like 25% of your what you try to bring in every month. Yeah. And then you pay taxes on top of that, on what you bring in. This is, this is rough stuff, my dude. There is too much money going to this. There is no reason. This is, this is bad for you. And, and and for a long term play, I know you can afford it on a monthly basis, but you should not be doing it because you're not. It's not good finance the way this is working out. <sighs> oh, and then looking at your credit card statement, I see you have student loans of ten thousand dollars. When did you take those out? No, so I'm a sophomore, just a sophomore. I just, this is my first supplement year. So, um, actually, I'm pretty sure a, um, a good sum of that is going to be forgiven. When did but, you take them out? Um, started college back in, wait, wait, yeah, I started college last year. Was it so, 10000 from last year or was some of that this year too? No, so I actually got an email from my actual university saying ever, any loans I took out for this school year and like the next semester for fall i mean for spring is not gonna be forgiven so i kind of calculate it so about like six thousand okay yeah that's what i was trying to get to so if that goes through you'll get six thousand but what i'm seeing here is since you have student loans for the year and the semester you've taken i'm assuming you're taking out more student loans in order to finish school are you cash flowing any part of school no but i do want to start paying the loans back during school you see this i have so many things to accomplish but I need to get a job. Like Instacart is not enough anymore. I did want to start paying, 
I know it's deferred right now until December, I think. But um, I also do qualify for the twenty thousand forgiveness, but we just don't have that. Yeah, you have two problems. You have the income problem that you mentioned. If you're a college student, hopefully you can get that up. You know, school is prioritized. Your second problem is your spending problem. If you did not give this money to your family who should be supporting you, not them, if you did not give 25% of your income to a car that is in a terrible loan, that stuff could go towards at least, you could be putting that 300, you could put, be putting almost 500 bucks a month from just the car and everything combined to these student loans, 500 bucks a month. That would be crazy awesome. 6,000 bucks a year. But you decide that you need to have this car. That doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, I guess. I mean, at the moment, it was like, you know, a car. I needed a car. I know. And you can, I promise you, as someone who did it, I, uh, I, the prices have changed. But as someone who did it through college, you can have the most piece of crap beater car in the world. Because you, uh, you're going to get a job that's not just putting miles in your car. You can have something that just gets you from A to B. It doesn't matter for these few years. You're getting yourself in a better financial situation for the long term. And it's you're going to be paying this car. Oh, my gosh. This car is bad, dude. Even refinancing, it's just not within your income and budget. And this money I mean, should be going to use in other places. The refinance option I actually got would drop it down to 4% instead of 10 and i'd be paying shorter months it would cut to 48 but i'd be paying a little bit more monthly 48's closer to almost good i prefer three years yeah but you see also the job i'm trying to get one from home okay if yeah. you get one from home and the vast majority of your classes are from home sell this freaking thing now that's not even a joke sell it and take uh are any of your classes in person right now yeah, one. But I, I sometimes go on Thursday. I'm part of, I have some like extracurricular, like leadership kind of stuff to do. So I'll be there Monday and Thursday, but not always. But class only on Monday, yeah. This car is so freaking bad for you and it's holding back your potential cash flow as much as you can for college. I don't think in your situation, especially with your family situation and everything, you can cash flow all of college. Not that I like student loans, but, you know, you're already in the situation. <sighs> but this car is preventing you from putting more money towards it and getting you in a better place afterwards. At, at least the loans are federal. I mean, I don't have any private loans. But... So people in the comments, they say that, like, getting a car for $5,000, the worst of the worst car, it would take more money putting into it to just keep it alive than it would buying you know, $20,000 car that's in good condition and stuff like that. Well, people I've had on this show that know anything about cars and actually work on cars uh, know that that is complete BS and is used more as an excuse at this time. Now, yes, it is very hard to find one at that point, especially in this market. It's easier to find close to like $7,000, 7 to 10000 But I'm serious, for you needing to leave the house once a week at this point when you're in a financial mess with this, I would sell, uh, I would keep it for a second, save up $4,000 as quick as you can, as quick as you can, which you can when you cut back fast food when you don't lend to the family. Uh, you should be able to do I that. I back from the family, so I'm not losing money, though. Like, I'm just, like, lending. Oh, well, it's good that you always get it back, which you're still enabling bad behavior. So when you cut back on eating out and you just stockpile as much as you can for a few months while making the minimum monthly payment on this car. And then you sell the car. You should, you know, she didn't help you because really you should. Yeah, such a, oh, because you're a little underwater. We'll probably have to make up like a thousand bucks to pay the loan off. And then try your hardest. And if it takes time, it's okay. But try your hardest to get an absolute beater that you take to a mechanic and the mechanic, you pay a hundred bucks for the mechanic to tell you that 
it will be good for a bit or it will be bad. If it's bad, you don't do it because those are the five thousand hour ones that will cost you more money in the long term. If the dealer or if the mechanic gives you a thumbs up, it's like okay, this car is crap. The AC is not that good. It has none of the fun technology. The speakers suck, but it will drive and it will drive reliably. Then you do it with your four thousand hours and the little bit you have in savings right now. And then you have the ability to take the money that you're bringing in from your work from home and start paying it towards these student loans that you want to be paying it towards. And you have the opportunity to start saving up for a good savings on the side when you graduate. This car is just so bad because you're going to be paying it off for years with an over 10% interest rate on a deal that was not good. That was not helpful from your aunt. That's yeah. what I would do, but what are you going to do? I mean, um, are you talking about like looking for a used car, like, like on offer up and stuff like that? Like, like what? Like, uh, like, like looking for like a $5,000 car, like on offer up. And because I wouldn't know where, where to start from that. Craigslist, uh, that, even in Facebook Marketplace, but you don't just buy a car because you see it for 5000 You oh, just, course, You spend yeah. 100 bucks to take it to your mechanic. I mean, I was thinking of just refinancing it and then see how that That's goes. not going to save you. That's not going to save you. This car is still way too expensive for what this is. The monthly payments are still way too expensive for what this is. The 4% interest is good. Uh, bringing what it down to four years more. is good. What if I just pay more monthly? And like refinance the 48 that I told you and just pay more monthly. No, it, it doesn't work because your goal of trying to pay off these student loans more to get yourself in a better, better financial situation, you're just essentially delaying that in order to justify having this car that you don't need and can't actually justify. You're trying to find a way to keep it. It doesn't make mathematical sense for your financial situation. You can have this car soon. You can have a nicer car than this soon in a few years. Take the sacrifice now. Please understand that a few years of sacrifice in college. College. Who cares? It's worth it. Please. I'll look into it. I'll, I'll see if I can sell it. I mean, I, at least I know that if I do sell it, I'll get close to it. I don't know how long that'll be for, but I'll, I'll look into it for sure. Yeah, you'll want to do it sooner than later for the car yeah. market's in a questionable place in terms of its future. I'll look into it. Let David know what you think about his financial situation in the comments below. And if you want to help support this channel, feel free to join my private Discord where you can see things like this happen live, chat with me on a daily basis, and have a video chat once a week. Shout out to my four cups of coffee supporters of Dio Martinez, Mark, Josh Bennett, Clayton 006, Tyler Chong, Drew Smith, Timothy Williams, Sam I am, Jason Spriggs, Nicholas Daly, Tom L, Jay Freedom. Eight cups of coffee are making the dream come true. Joseph Strickland, Anthony, an anonymous supporter, and Sam V03. You are all the best. Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.